A warm welcome to the second season of our Supply Chain Leadership Bulletin from beautiful Hamburg. I hope you're all healthy and secure out there. Today will actually be a little bit different than the previous interviews because today I will speak with three experienced senior management consultants out of the supply chain and logistics industry um, about the topic COVID-19, a catalyst for change. So a warm welcome to Andreas, Lutka and Stefan to our Supply Chain Leadership Bulletin. Let me shortly introduce you to the audience. Andreas Franke, he uh, led the logistics of um, CBR Fashion Group and Gary Weber before he started his own consultancy business. His focus is on uh, designing and implementing supply chain and logistics concepts and uh, reporting tools to achieve higher transparency in the supply chain. Ludger Tillmann, Ludger kept uh, top management positions um, at big international companies like Esprit and Scheffler Automotive, both in Europe and in Asia. His focus lies on the design and or uh, reorganization of international supply chains and logistics units. And Stefan Meyer, Stefan uh, kept top management positions at Fiege Logistics and actually has own management experience in every field of contract logistics. Consequently, his focus is on supporting uh, large scale in and outsourcing projects with a special focus on contracting and negotiation. So welcome again, it's a pleasure to have you here. Actually, I checked and we combine a century of senior management and consulting uh, experience here today in this uh, virtual room, which is really nice. If you need more information on uh, the participants, please check the info box down below the video. Um, the topic is COVID-19, a catalyst for change. Um, we discussed actually regularly during this crisis and there were two things we, we all had in common, a mutual theme, if you will. So firstly, we were all looking at the positive side of this crisis, uh, although it, it impacted us as well, for God's sake, only business-wise and, and not uh, health-wise. And we were secondly mutually convinced that this crisis, despite all the economic fallout and all the pressure on the companies, actually created a window of opportunity for change. So, if you will, a chance. Thanks for the extensive uh, introduction, Carsten. And uh, uh, I like it so much how the Chinese see it uh, from their side. And there is a crisis and opportunity uh, combined in one word, and it's uh, Wei Ji. Great. So it's, it's really interesting. I didn't know it as well, that there's uh, one, one word describing completely two different uh, situations. But as we said, uh, it is both a crisis and a huge chance. So if we talk about catalysts for change, um, Andreas, what is your observation in, in your segment, in your, in your industry? Okay, well, Carsten, thank you for your invitation and, and the short introduction. Um, in, in our actual projects and discussions with company leaders, we realize that the crisis shows us a lack of steering competence of supply chain activities. So crisis as a catalyst for supply chain control and what I mean is that in, in uh, recent years, a number of very good systems have been developed that allows us to track processes to specific milestones in order to act or react. And um, furthermore, the fast uh, moving consumer goods companies worked hard on multiple channels for B2B and B2C, but the different channels are still not linked in planning and operational management. So, COVID-19 has forced us to slow down or even stop supply chains, to shift goods between the channels, and then to restart them in a controlled model. Um, this competence of, of steering instead of monitoring will become more and more important. So we, we have to achieve a higher competence of control by understanding our business partners even better. So we, we should keep in touch with suppliers, not only concerning on target dates, much more we should know their actual production times, 
real capacities, opening times, and we have to discuss our different pursuits of interest. Mm -hmm. So a better mutual understanding between retailers and suppliers will enable a real control of the supply chain, which allows slowing down or speed up our delivery processes. Additionally, in case of omnichannel activities, we have to consider our channels not only under technical, but also under physical aspects. So we have to design and adopt our processes with a more holistic, centralized approach to enable a switch of capacities between the different channels. So, mm -hmm. And from my point of view, COVID-19 shows us more than any other business issue that the time of bias-driven supply chain is over and we change to a cross-functional supply and demand logic over all stakeholders. So only those companies who succeed in integrating suppliers and link the channels and processes in a technical and physical context will be able to take control of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thanks very much for this perspective. Um, Stefan, how do you, what do, do you observe in your, in your segment or in your projects and yeah, thanks, Carsten, for, for coming together, first of all, in this uh, interesting format. So what I um, experience right now is that um, the crisis situation discloses uh, very openly the quality you have in the relationship with your 3PL partner, with your logistics partner. Uh, and it turns out whether there's a real partnership or whether that's just a service provider relationship. So. Um, typically, in my uh, outsourcing projects, so when it comes to the negotiation process and the uh, contract design process, you obviously design scenarios and you try to find the right models and the right mechanics, how to cope with the consequences and impacts if these scenarios um, come in place. Um, for instance, like significant uh, increases in volumes, decreases in volumes, uh, or structural changes. But the uh, interesting thing is that in the current situation, it is so obvious that I tend to say no contract, no warehousing contract in the market might have foreseen all consequences that we are faced with right now. So we have significant changes, we have a long duration, we have an impact on the entire supply chain as basically every country and every company is affected. So I'm pretty sure no one has taken good provisions in the contracts. And this means um, both parties, both contract uh, parties need to improvise, say they have to immediately find the right reasonable and working solutions. And at the same time, they need to find, um, they need to consider the special situation the parties are in, um, their room to maneuver and their special constraints. So. Uh, what I'm trying to say is now it automatically turns out if you have a fair partnership and both parties are interested in surviving the situation together on eye level or whether you just have purchased a piece of logistics and uh, your service provider first of all takes care for himself and then maybe for your problems yeah and uh, to be fair at this point uh, I have to say of course that even the service providers of course will find out if they have a fair relationship and a fair partnership with their customers. So it's spicy versa as well. Um, and for me, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really good because it is a kind of ultimate test for your logistics relationship. And I expect pretty much two things. On the one hand, that existing service contracts will need to be adapted or renegotiated because it now becomes obvious that there is a need for change and a need for adaptation. Um, on the other hand, um, the customer side is forced to rethink completely the um, way how to outsource and how to interact with your 3PL partner. So for me, it's good news, bottom line, because I have to say, even before the crisis, there has been a, a high need to adapt the way how we interact between customers, the principals, and their service providers. So for me, it's good news because I expect there's, there's a high need for consultancy in this field.
Mm -hmm. So it speaks for, for sustainability and a long-term sight, even in this, in this crisis situation. Look, uh, so what is, what is your perspective? Where do you see a catalyst effect, so an acceleration due to this crisis? So I think, uh, Andreas and Stefan, you are so much right. Uh, I only can fully support you on, uh, on your statements and uh, allow me to provide some food for thoughts on the relevance of collaboration and cooperation here. Yeah? Especially during the first days of this uh, COVID-19 crisis, there has been an overwhelming amount of requests from already connected companies who had not really an idea, idea to deal with this new situation, even acted sometimes uh, quite panic striking and uh, there was an idea born after a long weekend with some colleagues on the phone supporting and helping our clients to start an initiative to support even other SMEs. As right now, in these times, a resilient and activatable network is more important than ever. We believe that an open exchange about pressing problems and challenges, possible solutions or experience can at least help here. And sometimes it is also a coincidence and this is already happening every single day with our initiative that we have found the right contact at the right moment. We want to be there available to the SME entrepreneur with our strengths, our network in these times and to show you with advice and action on your side more, possi more possibilities and ways. No matter whether we can solve the problem by ourselves or not, we would like at least to try to help with our know-how and our contacts. We cannot promise you there anything, but it's uh, much better than not trying anything. We firmly convinced that we are currently facing gigantic challenges that we only can overcome together. And therefore collaboration will be one of the key aspects. Um, you can have a look on our webpage and for sure Carsten will put it in the bio. And uh, we have there got some uh, quite impressive entrepreneurs, consultants and coaches from various industries we have a hell of know-how and the passion to support. The good old times before Corona will not come back. The consistency is gone. And please do not forget, trust enables cooperation. Cooperation enables integration. Integration enables reduction of cost and process complexity. And not to forget, especially during these times, the business is designed and lived by people. Yeah, it's really uh, thanks for all of the all of the perspectives actually, and, and as well look at yours, because uh, my perspective uh, is actually similar, but with a, with another spin. Uh, collaboration you mentioned uh, it's, it's crucial. People are doing business. Humans are interacting. This is, as you know, uh, a part of my business. Um, so for me, actually, uh, the crisis is a catalyst for, for leadership and, and corporate culture because in, in such a situation, you see in a very brutal way, if your organization is agile, if you have a, a good corporate culture, and if you have a, a strong and visionary uh, a leadership in place or not. Simply because if you don't have that, your company, your organization will not be able to, to, uh, to adapt uh, as forcefully and quickly as, as you need. Um, so actually, um, I take the, 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 the leadership uh, responsible uh, because I saw some, some really strange things, some, some actionism, like, like uh, um, firing people of, on specialist level or middle management at the early beginning of the crisis where you don't have any sight how it will develop. I think this is quite short term. And at the same time, I take leadership responsible for uh, losing speed due to zero, due to a zero mentality. Um, and uh, so actually this time is, is, uh, is a chance for, for leadership because leadership is forced to be agile, forced to be brave, forced to be transparent. Um, so it's a chance for you to, to step up as a leader and together your, your, your organization behind you. So I hope, uh, I do hope that uh, these uh, people will not fall back into their old habits afterwards. So take it as a, as a build on that and, and uh, yeah, nearly reinvent themselves um, as, as leaders and on the corporate uh, culture side. Um, actually such a crisis um, can be turned into a huge pride because coping with it successfully um, can create pride in an organization. So you overcome silos 
um, you have extraordinary performance, you have a completely different spirit in the organization. And so I could can only say and call for, for leadership to really build on this as well and enforce your cultural agendas now, because now you have a very good fundament. Pride is a perfect fundament uh, for building a, a, a better corporate culture. So watch my videos uh, in the first season of the Supply Chain Leadership Bulletin, especially uh, 9 and 10 on leadership and 2 on corporate culture. Um, yeah, so um, actually, thank you very much for these, for these perspectives. Um, I would like to summarize somehow that the COVID-19 crisis is a catalyst for change. It actually created a window of opportunity. So the question is how to use it. What do you think or what do you say? I think being active. Don't wait for others to answer your questions that come up right now, but be active yeah? and rethink how we want to work and we want to act. Yeah, For me, it's building on the positives, and at the same time, you have to cope with the crisis, but at the same time, never lose sight of your long-term uh, strategic goals. Correct. And uh, um, definitely also, do not underestimate, really activate your network. Yeah, Don't be shy. Yeah, There's a hell of people are under the same impressions and in the same situation, and uh, you need to communicate. Yeah, And communicate also open and honest uh, to your employees, but also to your colleagues. You will be really surprised yeah, what you can achieve in, uh, in really such a short time frame when you are open to the answers and the perspective of others. Yeah, really start doing something. So my advice to all retail companies is to uh, um, take the chance, um, start uh, uh, integration with all business partners, um, stop monitoring processes, only start to steer the process, start to control your supply chain and, and uh, take, take the chance and, and take the experience of the last weeks uh, to, to optimize. So actually it's, it's, it's easy for us, you know, to give advice to others. Uh, we, are, we are consultants, uh, but there's something, an expression I like, practice what you preach, I think it's very important. So uh, what did we actually do uh, to take something positive out of this situation or to bring something positive to the, to the situation? So uh, I initiated uh, an initiative, KMU for Germany. And uh, you can find us under KMU für Deutschland.de. And uh, it was very clearly the target to find uh, a couple of entrepreneurs, some uh, friendly consultants, some coaches and so on to help the SMEs. And uh, therefore, we have now a group of uh, 10 people who are actively, acting basically completely free of charge for, for SMEs who are asking for support, who are desperate uh, to understand ways out of the crisis, to want to get a different perspective, to want and have a sparing partner. And of course, but not of course, but uh, as a fact, so we are all for part of this of this uh, initiative. Um, thank you very much, all of you. It, it was a pleasure and as well fun to, to discuss with you um, and to understand your perspectives. And I think there were some really important things for our audience. So thank you very much and uh, talk to you in person as soon as possible. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.